Hi everyone, again uh, welcome to this uh, another lecture of um, the LPS class. Um, uh, today we are going to talk about, uh, we are continue to talk about the tickle TK that we left uh, last time. Um, last class uh, or then the last lecture we saw from the canvas as a um, widget and we got a lot of commands as to how to play with the canvas and uh, how to actually um, um, uh, get um, people to use the canvas. Uh, we also found some of these uh, new commands like uh, first of all like the bind command that we uh, started talking about it like a couple of weeks ago. Um, that bind commands and then we also associated with bind tags because um, there are more than um, one binding for an event. So essentially like I mean when there is an event whether it is a button press or a move of a mouse or whatever it is on a particular um, graphical user interface, um, we typically use the bind command to create a binding for an action. So when you actually select um, uh, or um, put together a command using the button press like I mean you write all the characters and then you need press run that command gets run in the background that is because of uh, this binding that uh, causes it to run where the run command is um, bound to that event or the event is actually bound to that run command. So um, that is something that we have um, seen now um, we also talked about this bind tags essentially the bind tags um, essentially like I mean the, that determines it is a command that determines which bindings apply to a window and the order of evaluation. So a bind command itself is uh, created creating the binding and then the binding is associated usually with a window a class or all so you can specify one of them basically so um, we saw this in the previous um, lectures the bind tags in command actually now determine which bindings apply to the window and order of the evaluation what does that mean so the usage is essentially it's bind tags window followed by the tag list so an example will be bind tags dot b is our window and then the order that we specify is all dot button and then dot b. So when an event happens basically like first it is applied to the all which is like everywhere outside and plus the button and then to the top level then the button itself whatever it that is um, you know, going on that will be evaluated and then finally like dot b. So this will uh, allow you to actually like this multiple events can be trapped and then they, I mean oh sorry multiple bindings can be trapped and then they can be run and then they do not need to be running at the same time or all simultaneously which they follow this order uh, by which uh, it will be run. So this is something that I wanted to tell you like I mean last time uh, we saw this bind tags uh, we did not explain at that point a uh, whole lot. Uh, now it is there and then the other widgets uh, that we have not really touched upon but uh, I really want you to understand and uh, try to read upon this is the, the tree widget this is also like very common when you look at your outlook uh, mail or any kind of uh, lists basically like I mean the views that are displayed are based on the tree. So the tree view widget can display and allow browsing through a hierarchy of items and show one or more attributes of each item as columns to the right of the tree. So you have like a big thing basically you have each item which is displayed and on the right hand side there are columns there it is displaying the its attributes. So if it is a mail program you can here you can see subject from date to things like that the various fields that you can think of or a particular mail 
I mean you can also like say like you know, important priority whatever. So for this mail you can associate all these attributes also. And then this particular widget is created by the tree view command. So here we create tree view dot tree. Then dot tree is the widget. And then if you want to add anything to that tree, we just say like dot tree insert. And then rearranging items is dot tree move. And we can detach an item from the tree which is using the dot tree detach, or even completely delete that item using dot tree delete. Then we can open widgets uh, basically, so that is like set is open uh, command. First, we need to specify whether it is an open is true, and then set is open uh, to open the widget. And then um, by opening the widget, we can now add stuff into it, delete stuff, query stuff, things like that. So, this is another uh, widget that we never talked about uh, in the previous lecture, but I just want you to know. Um, Useful one. So, in today's lecture, we will be talking about extending tickle with C and then some of the third party tickle extensions or expect DLT and the tickle die, and then uh, finally, the future of tickle TK. Um, actually, this is more like um, the past, the past kind of determines the future past of uh, tickle TK what are the various versions and uh, what they did what kind of uh, thing and then what is the latest version. So that is what uh, we will cover today um, and um, So now let us look at the, the topic, so extending tickle, so the main philosophy that we will be talking about is to focus on the primitives and then we will have like some uh, basics on the interpreters and how to execute scripts, uh, how to implement new commands, uh, dynamic loading. Managing the result screen, I'm not going to uh, talk about it today. Um, the main thing is essentially, like I mean, this is regarding uh, the machine level uh, understanding as to what are the different memory pieces and where the result goes into, and how do you manage the whole results. And then we will also like look at some more useful libraries like parsing variables, lists, and hash tables. So. Uh, we saw this in the very early um, lectures of uh, tickle uh, one is usually we can write uh, usually better to write a tickle script rather than a C code it is quick development and more flexible uh, and it is high level so no compilation is needed uh, it is also like a higher level way to write the scripts. And uh, why do we write it in C this is uh, something that we also like talked about earlier. We need to access the low level facilities uh, that is like hardware resources can be managed like in fact um, malloc or malloc actually is a memory allocation in C that specifically goes to the heap and actually allocates the memory we can request all those kind of um, different hardware features directly using C. Then there is also efficiency concerns. Um, basically like when we have like iterative calculations C can since it is a compiled language can optimize and uh, hence uh, it provides much faster execution. execution and then finally if we need uh, more structure and then if the code is complex uh, say for example we are uh, generating a program for a DNA sequencing algorithm or DNA sequencing that entire algorithm can be coded as a C program than a tickle script. Um, again um, this is the 
hypothetical and probably ideal case you, you may argue even for a tickle code which is okay um, but when this code gets complex we need to have like definite infrastructure to be in place and for that C is better. The if you have to write a new tickle command like I mean that implementing new tickle commands that provide few simple orthogonal primitives. So um, it is low level to provide independent access to all the key features but at the same time it can be high level to hide unimportant details and allow efficient implementation. So that is the reason why we can implement new uh, tickle commands. So here um, uh, quickly like a weather reports. So the goal is to retrieve weather reports over network from different servers. So um, if you use the tickle command set uh, one where we say like retrieve report format print on standard output that is too high level so it is inflexible. Now let us look at a second set of commands. We open a socket to the weather server, select a station, retrieve the first line of the report. This is too low level. So you, you can see that actually, like we still use the same tickle um, command set here and here. Now consider a third command set, which is basically it returns the list of all the available stations and given a station name, retrieve report. That is it, that is your command structure. This is just right. So, we will look at how to do it with these kind of so, um, uh, commands itself. So, in this section, like I mean, so uh, for designing a new command, we want to make sure that um, we need to choose the textual names for the objects. Um, for example, dot dialog dot bottom dot okay, uh, file three or std in. So uh, really, like objects can be uh, named in the textual context. If this is the case, then we have to use like uh, hash tables to map to the C structures. Other one is essentially like we can also try to use the object oriented commands. For example, we can say like dialog bottom okay configure foreground red. This kind of uh, style is good for small set of uh, small number of uh, well defined objects uh, they do not pollute the namespace basically each one will be independent and also like allows uh, similar commands for different objects. So there is there are different advantages in going with um, object oriented commands and then the third category is actually the action oriented command which is uh, string compare dollar $x dollar $y. This one is good if many objects or short lived objects. So, again, when you design a new command, make sure that you your considerations go through these three things. Now, how do you format the, the new commands? So, usually the preferred way is make them easy to parse with the tickle script. So, if somebody else writes a tickle script, they can uh, easily parse your. Uh, Command results. So, for example, here temp 53, high 68, low 37, precipit, precip uh, point to sky part. So, this kind of thing basically now you can know that okay, this is the my index and this is the value. So, the current temperature is 53, highest is 68, low is 37, and amount of precipitation is 0.02 and then sky is partly cloudy whatever it is and make them symbolic wherever possible example it is uh, we do not want to specify um, just numbers alone. So these kind of uh, in between like those uh, things will make it easier. Now we can also use package prefixes in the command names and global variables for example instead of just stations we can say with weather stations or if the weather station is xxx 
we can say like whether stations etc underscore x x x instead of uh, just saying like just x x x same weather report and then maybe play things like that basically like we can use the package prefixes. So this way like I mean it allows you to uh, allows for the packages to coexist without any name clashes. Now let us uh, talk about the interpreters. Uh, so that is the, the basic one and then now the interpreters. So tickle inter interpreter uh, inter structure this is a structure that captures that encapsulates the executing execution state. What are the execution states? It has variables, the commands implemented in C, the tickle procedure, the execution stack. So um, it encapsulates this entire the execution states. You can have many interpreters in a single application, but usually just only one uh, is active. So the way to create the interpreter is uh, tickle interp um, use a star or um, um, asterisk interp this basically creates the, the structure and then we can uh, just point that uh, structure to the create uh, command create interp command. So once we have the structure then we just say basically interp equal to tickle create interp. And uh, this is just an object oriented command which now creates your um, interp. And then, if you want to delete, use the procedure tickle delete interp i n t t r p interp. So, this will delete the interpreter. And uh, if you want to execute uh, tickle scripts, we basically like uh, uh, define integer uh, code and then code equal to tickle eval inter set a equal to 1 or set a 1 now it evaluates this one and then sets the value of that as a code the code typically indicates uh, the success or failure either it is tickle ok normal completion tickle error error occurred. another way to do it is the set a 1 you can put it inside the init dot tickle and then you can say tickle eval file inter init dot tickle and there is yet another third way to do the uh, tickle evaluation which is inter set a1 as three different uh, strings so now um, the inter result points to the string the result or an error message and then the application will display the result or message for the user. Okay, And then where do scripts come from basically you can read from the standard input read from a script file or associate X events and wait for the events invoke the associated scripts with this the TK. And then embedded in the C code. This is the fixed or private scripts that uh, we will talk about. So, creating this new tickle commands essentially. So, um, we write the command procedure in C. So, EQ command client data, uh, client data tickle interp where we create that one basically like then we have the in, uh, integer r c and the uh, char uh, star star r v r v. So this is in, in c it is written so if it is less than 3 or like not equal to 3 then we just say like wrong arguments otherwise we go and like compare the r v 1 and r v 2 from here and then um, if they are not the same then result is 1 otherwise result is 0. So this is basically to compare two commands to see whether it is the same or not and then we return the um, return to the main. Uh, 
and then once we create this uh, command procedure then we register this with the interpreter that is tickle create command inter eq eq command client data and uh, now so the eq command is now called eq which is essentially a string compare now once we register this the eq command will be called whenever eq command is invoked in the interrupt you know, the interpreter you can also be delete you can delete the command by just uh, giving the uh, tickle delete command inter eq so this is the most useful for object oriented commands of the commands. Now so we talked about the client data what is client data. So in the um, tickle uh, command file here itself we talked about the client data uppercase client data and then lowercase client data. So here we talk about it again. Um, it is used to pass any one word value to the command procedures and call back. So the second client data is usually the pointer to the data structure manipulated by the procedure. So we pass the first one and then the second one is uh, manipulated by the procedure can be. Um, and then the cache pointers in and out of the client data types basically. So um, we can say like client data gizmo pointer, and then pointer we can define that basically like star, and then um, the client data. So we can have many objects share one command procedure by using this. So this is how we write new commands and uh, register new commands with the um, interpreter. So now let us look at the packages. Um, so our goal is now to make it easy to develop and use uh, tickle extensions. So we can use the package prefixes to prevent name conflicts. So this is the one of the things that we talked about in the earlier one, right? Uh, in the earlier slides, so we use a package prefix. So we can pick a short um, prefix for a package, for example, RD. So we use this in all the global names essentially. So in C procedure, it's uppercase RDB open. C variable is RDB. And then the tickle command is also like RD underscore. So now, once we have specified or uh, use the package prefixes, um, now we create the package initialization procedure. And it is named after the package. So RDB underscore init is the uh, package initialization procedure. This creates packages commands and then evaluates any startup script uh, if you specify. So here is an example there is int rdb init tickle interpreter int erp. Then we create the tickle command first create command tickle create command and then uh, return to return tickle eval file with that and then uh, what the init dot tickle is. Now if you want to use the package um, basically we need to compile this as a shared library. So here we do the the CC compile. Um, so rdb dot c we compile that and then we load it as um, 
rdb.o and uh, output is rdb.so. Now we can dynamically load into the TCL shell or wish. So to load it, basically load RDB dot so and then the top level this is the RDB. Now Tickle will call the RDB init to initialize the package. So this dynamic initialization is fairly new. I mean, you uh, asked in uh, the versions. We will talk about about so uh, today and uh, where Tickle and TK what versions are there and what we should use. So now let's talk about the load command. The load has uh, several forms. Load file name. Load file name, package name, load nothing, package name. Here, the file name is the name of the file. Basically, here you have tell it as uh, rdb.so, so that will be the package. Uh, that will be the file name, and then the package name is the top level. Um, Package specification that is inside, which is in this case it's RDB. So in this case it will be just XYZ. So we whether we load it as a DLL dynamic link library or SO dot SO is uh, we can use info shared live extension to decide between these two we can also use info loaded command to see what packages have been loaded into this program if you want to load a program statically then we specify that tickle static package is uh, tickle interpreter interpret and character star package name so that points to the thing and then we also specify the tickle package init proc which is uh, star init proc and then tickle package init proc star safe in once we specify this then we can say load uh, xyz Of course, in this scenario, the dynamic loading is preferred. Now, the fourth option for managing results is to use library procedures. So, tickle result, set result, interpreter, string, this will replace the old value. And if you say like tickle append the result, then that extends the old value. And if you do append element, then it extends the old value, but now as a list. If you do use reset result, now that clears the old value. Now let's look at the utility procedures and one of them is process parsing. This is used by command procedures to parse arguments. Um, usually it takes in a value and a code. The code is um, just a tickle get int interpreter rb1 and then value.
it stores the integer in value and it returns tickle ok or tickle error. If there is a parse error then it returns a tickle error and leaves message in uh, interpreter um, result. Other useful procedures um, tickle get double, tickle expression double, tickle get boolean, expression boolean, expression long, and expression small. So um, the tickle get boolean accepts s, false, one, zero, etc. And expr is essentially like variations. Uh, Interpret argument as an expression. So, in utility procedures, what are variables essentially? Like, um, so basically, they can be read, write, or unset. So here an example basically like uh, we have a character value, value is tickle get var interpreter a something and then tickle set var interpret something and then uh, unset uh, something else. So we can use uh, get set and unset basically pretty much uh, read write and uh, unset. Then you can also set traces basically so that is uh, you can trace a variable. So that is trace var, and then we can say okay, tickle trace reads, tickle trace writes, trace procedure and plan data. So we can trace it through how the value actually is changing um, throughout the program, throughout the script. So and then uh, the trace prop is um, it will be called basically to. Um, Doing each read or write of uh, a, so it can you can monitor the accesses, can override value and uh, read or or the value value read or written. Now for parsing, assembling a proper list, we use the tickle split list. And tickle merge. The hash tables are quite flexible. Basically, it is in it hash table, create hash entry, find hash entry, delete hash entry, and delete the whole hash table. The hash table is just like uh, having tickle associative arrays uh, in C. It's also an excellent way to store the client data records for object oriented command model. And then dynamic strings is uh, through this uh, these procedures: D string init, D string append, D string D string append element, D string value, and then finally D string. Field. The dynamic strings grow efficiently without bounds like a good string class in C++ it is used internally by tickle for result management. So this is again another data structure within tickle. So in terms of extending tickle interfaces to see itself are very simple 
So tickle is um, designed to make this true. And when we write, when we extend tickle, we focus on the primitives and use tickle script to compose fancy features. So we write the most primitive procedures first, and then we basically combine the features of uh, tickle to combine multiple primitives into one, and then all that the, the larger command. So if you are writing a widget for TK, the good news is that one widget, uh, one widget that can work on Unix, Windows, etc. So that is your best one. But um, so the TK port uses the port of uh, XLIP to support graphics, so it's, it's okay. But what is the bad news is that you will have to write to XLIP. So TK actually uses only uh, XLib, which is the lowest uh, level part of the X libraries. It doesn't use uh, XP, Athena, Motif, uh, etc. So to draw, you have to use the XLib also. So TK supplies utilities, for example, the 3D outline drawing. The font utilities, even notification timers, idle, idle procs, etc. And then you have to supply the tickle commands, the initialization procedure, configuration table, even handlers, and deletion uh, callbacks. Then we use object oriented command paradigm that is one tickle command per widget class and one tickle command per widget. Instance. The now I will talk about a couple of uh, other um, meta languages or meta scripts. Basically, one such thing is called uh, expect. The expect is really the scripting language to interface with FTP, Telnet, FSCK, etc. Which cannot be automated. So um, one way to uh, it's also a very good way to create uh, GUIs for interactive command line applications. It's also good way to react to prompts from the command line apps. And uh, usually they expect uh, can automate tedious interactive processes, glue GUI actions to simulated keyboard outputs, and reattach the sub process to the keyboard. And one thing to note is it works uh, only on uh, true POSIX uh, or the Unix systems. So uses uh, pseudo TTYs basically TTY is a Unix construct and that is the reason why it does not it doesn't work well in the others. So in expect the commands are like this basically there is a command called spawn you can say basically it is telnet um, and which uh, machine it is um, which server and then what is the port number. So the expect response to patterns from pipe, for example, expect can say like connect, connection refused, unknown host, login, default. So when connection refused, basically that means that exit, unknown host is the DNS complaint. Uh, then we have the login procedure. Um, reconnect two-way pipe to the console. So uh, the other one is the uh, BLT essentially uh, this is also it is a toolkit offering set of widgets and geometry manager so this helps you to draw the pictures uh, uh, display graphs very easily and this particular um, toolkit offering is written in C 
it has several mega widgets um, the BLT graph is one of the sub one and that is the most useful one and uh, that is the one that is um, very popular also. Then other commands basically like highlight text drag and drop bar chart table things like that can be easily built using the BLT. So to invoke a BLT graph widget we specify the BLT graph command with the dot D as the widget name and then we specify all the other things and then here we are just configuring the dot D and then uh, we can configure the X axis and the Y axis um, as to what the value should be. Yeah, the X axis is pretty much its time and Y axis is not the time. So once we create the uh, configure this and then we create the various axis the X axis and the Y X axis and the Y axis we then create the, the elements basically element create series 1 X data is dollar uh, X1 Y data is dollar Y1 and then what is the line width foreground background and then uh, what is the amount. similarly we can plot another uh, set of data as well. So this is that is how the BLT graph widget is used which is much very common. Um, now let us look at one more thing which is the TC tickle die essentially this is usually the front end to Corba projects the um, it lets uh, tickle TK talks directly to the Cobra object the Cobra lets objects written in different languages. Um, Communicate essentially. So core bytes is sitting in the center, and it gets the objects in from in various languages, and it communicates. The TKGUI is TKGUI for remote objects are easy and very powerful. TK die scripts are faster and easier than C++ code. So okay so this uh, this is pretty much the technical aspects of it of the tickle TK uh, let us look at some of the releases and what went into the release and what is the latest in the release. So 7.6 and TK 4.2 was uh, originally there. And this one has a revision of Grider uh, needed for Spectacle FCS, uh, C API change for channel drivers, uh, actually the, the beta release and all that happened so ignore that statement there. And then 7.6 plug and 4.2 plug, which is which have features needed for Netscape plugin, and you can just uh, use the plugin information. Um, and then safety, uh, I mean, already released in uh, plugin binaries, and no source uh, release until Tickle 7.7 .7 and TK 4.2, which is also like past now. So 7.3 is essentially uh, 7.5 is the latest and greatest um, uh, sorry not 7.7.5 basically we will talk about that um, but after 7.6 the 7.7 .7 came into uh, being and tickle, TK was from 4.2 it became 4.3 here basically uh, we had native widgets on PCs and Mac. There is a new menu mechanism essentially the menu bars are implemented with menu widgets there is a new menu option for the top level windows the tear of menus are clones and it can use the same menu in several places 
and uh, hiding the pair of entries is another uh, issue. So the new font mechanism basically like this is uh, very nice for uh, non Unix uh, machines. Um, basically we specify label and then dollar L I mean sorry dot L and font times 12 bold and then we say font uh, create title family Helvetica, uh, Helvetica size 24 and weight is bold and then we um, uh, label basically um, to title and then font configure title and size. Uh, is 36. So the other things were basically virtual bindings essentially and even generation. So this is something that um, we did not touch upon the TK windows can create a virtual bindings essentially meaning like virtual events which can be bound uh, inside. So um, you do not really need to um, do all the actions that um, the, 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 the tool is expecting. Now it also supports the standard dialog there is a portable file commands uh, rm mv make and uh, etc. It also supports the binary IO uh, so read write blocks of data insert extract uh, fields of uh, blocks and then copy between channels. And then other possible extensions to 7.7 and TK4.3 are mega widgets, image revisions, and then channel support, and then finally more text improvements. So um, these were all the original dates essentially, but the the next one is the article 8.0 this one has a, a bytecode compiler um, and it, this is ftp.newsoft.com that should have it and then we have a new object system for data representation the new C, C API for um, command procedures many other tickle library procedures. The old interface is still not supported, but it is slow. I mean, it, it is still supported, but it is slow. And then, what about the namespaces? Basically, like that is another thing that uh, we need to talk. We need to worry about. Okay, so in tickle eight dot o we also made some possible changes to the semantics um, the more aggressive list uh, uh, syntax checking is uh, enabled in uh, tickle eight dot o and then the conversion for l f n and l f So uh, 
for for the tickle a dot o you have the bytecode compiler essentially and you can go to the ftp neosoft dot com uh, for the third party items there is a new object system for the data representation the new C, C APIs for command procedures and many other library procedures. So here the old interfaces are still supported but they are very slow and what about the namespaces and then there is also like some changes to the semantics a more aggressive list syntax checking basically L append and uh, L index. And then changes to the error messages, error info, and then line numbers. So the view the schedule basically like this are all like this. So the latest one is uh, tickle is tickle tk 8.6. Tickle supports object oriented programming. It has a stackless uh, evaluation. So. When the procedures are called uh, and the procedures are nested, the nested procedures are called in the sequence. Uh, previously, it used to use a stack for the execution. Basically, it stores all the state in a stack, and then um, it uh, executes the next one. And if that also nests another procedure, it retains everything into another stack and then uh, uh, go on. So. In the new one, that particular thing has changed basically, like that. Uh, that is for, that was found to be like fairly inefficient, so it has changed, and then it's a stackless execution in uh, tickle eight point six. It also has enhanced uh, exception handling. Uh, the commands called try and throw, which um, attempts to actually uh, catch an exception and then uh, actually also like to. Uh, Change the course uh, when then exception happens. Okay, and then there are many other uh, enhancements uh, to uh, to the tickle uh, eight point six. On the TK front, there is a built-in support for PNG format. For the um, graphics, there is also a new uh, command uh, for, for busy windows. Um, essentially, uh, it's called TK busy command. There is support for angled text and moving things on a canvas. So, and uh, other projects basically uh, the spec tickle, spec Java, web edit, micro scripting basically like um, we can use, uh, we can edit web pages uh, just what you see is what you get kind of uh, mode using the web edit. We can insert tickle, tk scripts uh, uh, at various places um, and then the script fire at interesting times essentially. Um, and then the safe tickle um, basically which is uh, has a better TK it has better TK support the socket communication and developing in interesting and interesting security policies um, you can add authentication uh, for example the MD5 signatures. So that is pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover in terms of TK so today mainly like I mean we looked at um, uh, several areas um, basically. Um, so, in once again, like I just wanted to uh, summarize uh, the things that we did uh, for today. Um, so, mainly, like I mean, we talked about the extending tickle with uh, C. We also looked at the third party tickle extensions, the expect, PLT, and tickle die, and then we talked about the past and the future and the present of tickle and tk which is essentially like which versions what is what are supported what can you expect in the future so i think uh, this concludes this um, lecture uh, once again thank you very much for um, listening thank you